Yes, I was lucky enough to spend four days in Tahir Square this week. And I have to say, I mean, I've been a revolutionary for, you know, over 25 years, but to actually witness a revolution taking place in front of your very eyes, what I saw in Tahir Square was the most inspiring and humbling um, experience. And I think that when you met people who had faced bullets, who had faced tear gas, who had faced armed thugs, in every sort of repression you can imagine in the last days, and yet they held out. It was absolutely inspiring. And I spoke to a socialist who's still in the square this morning, and he said more people stayed the night in Tahir Square last night than at any other time since the revolution began. People told me we have lost our fear. Mubarak used to hold us down, but we have lost our fear. And that was shown everywhere. The banners hanging around the buildings, the army tank that still had soldiers on it with fuck Mubarak spray painted on its side. And everywhere you went, people had homemade placards. They weren't placards like we have today. Everybody made their own. Or they spelled out go in Arabic in humans on the square so that the army helicopters could read it as they went past. And everywhere you have an effigy of Mubarak hanging from the traffic lights. You have the uh, Al Jazeera on live on a massive banner made of sewn together sheets so people can watch. Because when I was there, there was no internet, there was no email, there was no Twitter. The only thing we had was word of mouth about what was happening everywhere. And yet they still got four to eight million people on the streets on Tuesday. It was an absolutely magnificent achievement of self-organization. And throughout it, people kept sweeping the square, there was food, there was water shared, there was security, there was doctors in their white coats giving out limited medical supplies because the pharmacies were running low, but yet everything was shared because they felt that sense of solidarity. But there was politics and arguments and debates, but there was also music and poetry. The sense of solidarity in that square, the sense of a whole city in that square, they took it over and they were running it for themselves. It was an absolutely wonderful sight. But I want to once say one thing. When I came back to England on Wednesday night, I see the media are obsessed with only one thing, not the Egyptian people taking power into their own hands, but Islamism. They're horrified, aren't they, at the idea that there might be Muslims in government, that there may be the uh, Muslim Brotherhood or other people in government that they don't like. And David Cameron this morning going on about um, Islamicism and, and saying that, uh, that Muslims should mix and all the rest of it. The idea of Islamophobia is at the heart of what the media are saying about the, are saying about the Egyptian revolution. And I think we have to say, do Muslims not deserve democracy as well? Are they not allowed to vote for who they choose? I think we have to take a really hard line on this. Because the US and Obama seem to think the only democracy that the Egyptians are allowed is ones that are given by the US. Everywhere I went, there was placards of people saying, we don't want foreign interference. We want to make our own revolution. And I think when you look at the tear gas made in the USA, when you look at the bullets made in the USA, when you saw the jets, they flew low. We were terrified. They flew so low, there was a sonic boom through the city. People said, this is what they do to the Palestinians every day. They will not frighten us. But that is what US money is being spent on, on the arms to keep the people down. One other two points I want to make. One is women are at the center of this revolution. All this nonsense about we're going to Afghanistan to give women's liberation at the point of a gun and bombing people. There is women's liberation happening in that square. Women wearing the hijab or the niqab or neither are part of this revolution and it's a tremendous sight to see. It was absolutely magnificent. And I saw on the television when I came back, young women breaking rocks to help fight back Mubarak's thugs. That's women's liberation and they're making themselves their own history in that square. But I think my final point is, they're not broken, they're still fighting and they're a beacon of hope, not just in Egypt, but across the Arab world and across the globe. We need to give them solidarity. We give them solidarity here, but I tell you what, one bit of good solidarity would be, why don't we try and bring down our own government, the warmongers and the cutters. Let's do that. Victory to the Egyptian revolution.